89. Kokalika. Then the Bhikkhu Kokalika approached the Lord, paid homage to him, sat down to one side, and said, Bhante, Saraputta and Moggallana have sinful desires and have come under the control of sinful desires. The Lord replied, Do not say so, Kokalika. Do not say so, Kokalika. Place confidence in Saraputta and Moggallana, Kokalika. Saraputta and Moggallana are well behaved. A second time the Bhikkhu Kokalika said to the Lord, Bhante, although I consider the Lord worthy of faith and trust, I still say that Saraputta and Moggallana have evil desires and have come under the control of evil desires. Do not say so, Kokalika. Dot. Saraputta and Moggallana are well behaved. A third time the Bhikkhu Kokalika said to the Lord, Bhante, although I consider the Lord worthy of faith and trust, I still say that Saraputta and Moggallana have evil desires and have come under the control of evil desires. Do not say so, Kokalika. Do not say so, Kokalika. Place confidence in Saraputta and Moggallana, Kokalika. Saraputta and Moggallana are well behaved. Then the Bhikkhu Kokalika rose from his seat, paid homage to the Lord, circumambulated the Lord keeping the right side toward him, and departed. Not long after the Bhikkhu Kokalika had left, his entire body became covered with boils the size of mustard seeds. These then grew to the size of mung beans. Then to the size of chickpeas. Then to the size of jujube pits. Then to the size of jujube fruits. Then to the size of myrobalans. Then to the size of unripe belly fruits. Then to the size of ripe belly fruits. When they had grown to the size of ripe belly fruits, they burst open, exuding pus and blood. He then just lay on banana leaves like a fish that had swallowed poison. Then the independent Brahma Tudu approached the Bhikkhu Kokalika, stood in the air, and said to him, Place confidence in Saraputta and Moggallana, Kokalika. Saraputta and Moggallana are well behaved. Who are you, friend? I am the independent Brahma Tudu. Didn't the Lord declare you to be a non-returner? friend. Then why have you come back here? See how much wrong you have done. Then the independent Brahma Tudu addressed the Bhikkhu Kokalika in verse. When a person has taken rebirth an axe is born inside his mouth with which the unwise cuts himself by uttering wrongful speech. He who praises one deserving blame. Or blames one deserving praise casts with his mouth an unlucky throw, by which he finds no happiness. Slight is the unlucky throw at dice. That results in the loss of one's wealth. Of all, oneself included. Much worse is this unlucky throw of harboring hate against the holy ones. For a hundred thousand and thirty-six nirabhadas, plus five abhadas. The slanderer of noble ones goes to hell, having defamed them with evil speech and mind. Then the Bhikkhu Kokalika died on account of that illness, and because of his resentment against Saraputta and Mughal SNA, after death he was reborn in the Red Lotus Hell. Then, when the night had advanced, Brahma Sahampati, of stunning beauty, illuminating the entire Jetta's grove, approached the Lord, paid homage to him, stood to one side, and said to him, Bhante, the Bhikkhu Kokalika has died, and because of his resentment against Saraputta and Moggallana, after death he has been reborn in the Red Lotus Hell. This is what Brahma Sahampati said. He then paid homage to the Lord, circumambulated him keeping the right side toward him, and disappeared right there. Then, when the night had passed, the Lord addressed the Bhikkhus. Bhikkhus, last night, when the night had advanced, Brahma Sahampati approached me and said to me, As above. He then paid homage to me, 
circumambulated me keeping the right side toward me, and disappeared right there. When this was said, a certain bhikkhu said to the Lord, How long, Bhante, is the lifespan in the red lotus hell? The lifespan in the red lotus hell is long, bhikkhu. It is not easy to count it and say it is so many years, or so many hundreds of years, or so many thousands of years, or so many hundreds of thousands of years. Then is it possible, Bhante, to give a simile? It is, Bhikkhu, the Lord said. Suppose there was a Kosalan cartload of twenty measures of sesamum seed. At the end of every hundred years a man would remove one seed from it. In this manner the Kosalan cartload of twenty measures of sesamum seed might be depleted and eliminated more quickly than a life in a single Abhuta hell would go by. One life in the Nirabhuta hell is the equivalent of twenty lives in the Abhuta hell. One life in the Ababa hell is the equivalent of twenty lives in the Nirabhuta hell. One life in the Ahaha hell is the equivalent of twenty lives in the Ababa hell. One life in the Atata hell is the equivalent of twenty lives in the Ahaha hell. One life in the water lily hell is the equivalent of twenty lives in the Ababa hell. One life in the sweet fragrance hell is the equivalent of twenty lives in the water lily hell. One life in the blue lotus hell is the equivalent of twenty lives in the sweet fragrance hell. One life in the white lotus hell is the equivalent of twenty lives in the blue lotus hell. And one life in the red lotus hell is the equivalent of twenty lives in the white lotus hell. Now, because he harbored resentment against Sariputta and Moggallana, the bhikkhu Kokalika has been reborn in the red lotus hell. This is what the Lord said. Having said this, the Sugata, the teacher, further said this. Here Buddha repeats the words spoken by Brahma Turu above. When a person has taken rebirth, an axe is born inside his mouth, with which the unwise cuts himself. By uttering wrongful speech, he who praises one deserving blame, or blames one deserving praise, casts with his mouth an unlucky throw, by which he finds no happiness. Slight is the unlucky throw at dice. That results in the loss of one's wealth. Of all, oneself included. Much worse is this unlucky throw. Of harboring hate against the holy ones. For a hundred thousand. And thirty-six nirabhadas, plus five abhadas. The slanderer of noble ones goes to hell. Having defamed them with evil speech and mind powers of desirelessness. Then the venerable Sariputta approached the Lord, paid homage to him, and sat down to one side. The Lord then said to him, Sariputta, when a bhikkhu's taints have been destroyed, how many powers does he possess by reason of which he can claim to have attained the destruction of the taints? My taints have been destroyed. Bhante, when a bhikkhu's taints have been destroyed, he possesses ten powers by reason of which he can claim to have attained the destruction of the taints. My taints have been destroyed. What ten? Here, Bante, Abahu with taints destroyed has clearly seen all conditioned phenomena as they really are with correct panna as impermanent. This is a power of a bhikkhu with taints destroyed on the basis of which he claims to have attained the destruction of the taints. My taints have been destroyed. Again, a bhikkhu with taints destroyed has clearly seen sensual pleasures as they really are with correct panna as similar to a charcoal pit. This is a power of a bhikkhu with taints destroyed. Again, the mind of a bhikkhu with taints destroyed slants, slopes, and inclines to seclusion. It is withdrawn, delights in renunciation, and is entirely finished with all things that are a basis for the taints. This is a power of a bhikkhu with taints destroyed. Again, a bhikkhu with taints destroyed has developed and well developed the four establishments of mindfulness. 
This is a power of a bhikkhu with taints destroyed. Again, a bhikkhu with taints destroyed has developed and well developed the four right strivings. The four bases for psychic potency. The five spiritual faculties. The five powers. The seven factors of enlightenment. The noble eightfold path. This is a power of a bhikkhu with taints destroyed on the basis of which he claims to have attained the destruction of the taints. My taints have been destroyed. Bante, when a bhikkhu's taints have been destroyed, he possesses these ten powers by reason of which he can claim to have attained the destruction of the taints. My taints have been destroyed.